Cabin in the Woods is a 2012 film written and directed by Drew Goddard. And as an assist from J- uh, Joss Whedon. Who is this guy? What's important about this film and also kind of weird is that it deconstructs the entirety of horror in such a way that it also manages simultaneously to encompass every single horror film ever made. Confused? You won't be after this episode of... And that's a contradiction to say the least, and one that if not perfectly executed would mean that it would be categorically rejected for overreaching and generally being a piece of crap. But it doesn't overreach, and it wasn't rejected. It's kind of a perfect movie, and not least of which is because while in the process of deconstructing horror films, the movie also deconstructs itself. This is a film, if you haven't seen it a second time, you should probably do so. The characters are essentially developed backward, which is easy to miss on the first go-around. I think everyone remembers that this is a movie about the five archetypes, but A, that's only in the American... Well, okay, hang on. Spoilers. Uh, Spoilers. I'm going to talk about this film in more depth than pretty much anything I've ever touched, so... Warning, what is it? Goodbye. Five strangers meet at a cabin, and for the earth to be saved, they must all be killed within a specific set of rules, save one, which basically is a fielder's choice on the heroine dying or living, but everyone else has to die. You know, like a lot of horror movies. So the American sacrifice needs five archetypes the athlete, the whore, their words, not mine, the scholar, the fool, and the virgin, who is the heroine of the story. That's the same basic setup for most of the American horror cinema. But what about Italian horror or Japanese horror? Yep, that's how deep this rabbit hole goes. The rules are at least one of those regions, once a year, must successfully accomplish the regional set of rules or this f***ing old god's gonna come up and then stomp on your lunchables and eat your sister. But from the outset, the roles are actually reversed. But this is zombie, redneck, torture family. By any set of moral standards, the good guys are the people that understand needing to make the hard calls to literally save the earth on a yearly basis. That's these guys. I mean, only a group of monsters would refuse to sacrifice their own lives if it meant saving the entire world. Oh, like these assholes that totally do that? You still think they're the good guys? You guys are shit all shitters. This movie begins with every region having failed, save two, America and Japan. And when Japan fails to succeed in their own Ringu-esque rule set, it's all down to America. So they cheat. For the victims of the ritual to fit into the comically stereotypical archetypes, they change the game around them. The horror, Jules, is not that at all. So she dyes her hair blonde for reasons she's not even sure of. Hurry up with the very fabulous, I'm getting insecure about it. And they basically poison her scalp to make her like, like lick a dead wolf's head dumb? To reiterate this fact, they trick her into being the movie's only nude scene. And then she gets her head cut off. The athlete, Kurt, is also not that at all because he's too smart. You should read this. Gorofsky. I mean, he's the guy handing out book recommendations at the beginning like he's a friggin' famous author recommender guy. Got him. So they have to make him dumb with a beer, which makes everyone dumb. Except for the one who doesn't partake, but more on him later. Oh, and Kurt is super dumb, f- crashes shit into the force field. <laughs> but the powers that be don't pull it off. And I think I know what mistake they made. They confused who was the virgin and who was the fool. It's kind of all there. I mean, we meet Dana and learn that she's hung up on a professor she was sleeping with. One might say, quite foolishly. Why haven't you stuck that asshole's picture on the dartboard yet? Or literally, the other character actually says that. Conversely, throughout the film, the only one that speaks any sense is Marty, our actual virgin. He's the one that knows not to split up, that they're being manipulated. Yeah, good idea. Really? He tries to stop them from going into the basement, messing with the catalyst, and reading the f***ing Latin. I'm drawing a line in the f***ing sand here. Do not read the Latin. And all he ever really owns up to is making out with Jules one time. We made out once. Never sex, and he's actually the only person in the movie that could even possibly be an actual virgin. And mixing him up kind of f***ed us all, and we got murdered by a thousand foot rock mother monster. I'm a mother monster. But they met every other requirement. And I love that this is just a chore for the powers that be because Bradley mother f- was totally messing with him on the phone. Mordecai, baby, what's happening? How's the weather up top? The lambs have passed through the gate. Well, you're, you're doing a great job out there. By the numbers, man, you gotta start it off just right. Their blind eyes see nothing of the horrors to come. Their ears are stopped. They are the gods fool. Cleanse them. Cleanse the world of their ignorance and sin. Bathe them in the crimson of... Am I on speakerphone? Because they just need the checkbox. They don't care about his feelings because he's a crazy old dude. But the victims were warned. You got enough to get you there. Getting back. That's your concern. 
And who dooms the group by reading from the book? Who argues that they shouldn't do that? Virgin fool. But then Hadley's like, I am never going to see a merman. Ever. Two would be thankful. The cleanup on him is a nightmare. Oh, come on. Yeah, whoops. See, that's ir- it's ironical because it's spitting out. But back to the nude scene real quick, and I, I don't mean to dwell on this, but there's actually some very important commentary happening here, so just listen to this exchange. Show us the goods. Does it really matter if we see We're her? not the only ones watching, Ken. Gotta keep the customer satisfied. Yeah, they're talking about you. The old gods in the movie are horror fans in the audience. They point out so clearly that the nude scene shouldn't be there, but it's the fear of the audience, the ones watching, that causes this to happen. I mean, they look pretty bored. This is also where the movie decides to revolt against you. They reach the third act climax at the end of the second act because the story being told by the powers has ended. Now the characters are the ones telling the story free of convention. And holy shit. So this idea that the sexually experienced archetype is the girl that dies quickly into a horror movie, they're missing the entire point of the trope. It originated with Mrs. Voorhees because her son drowned at Camp Crystal Lake while the counselors that should have been watching him were too busy having sex. That's what the first Friday the 13th is about. Jason wasn't even the killer in it. And she kills all of them out of blind, devastated revenge. That American horror adapted the sex equals dangerous cliche without also adapting the reasoning behind it is really sort of depressing when you think about it. The object lesson in the creation of the trope was that giving into sexual desire or our carnal desires while you're responsible for the safety of a child and it results in their harm is bad. That's when sex is bad. That first Friday the 13th was a great horror because it pled the case of both killer and victim. You're not 100% on either side. And this movie is basically thumbing their nose at it. It's a sex positive movie that makes a point that these tropes are stupid and boring and hackneyed and beyond sexist and so out of date that we forgot why the horror rule existed in the first place. But you gotta please the old gods. Hello. Or open the elevators and unleash a menagerie of demons from hell to rip the people defending their ancient conventions apart like an undercooked scallop on Hell's Kitchen. It's raw! Because once you think about what all this means when you add it together, it becomes very clear what Goddard and Whedon were saying. We, bleeding and dying, would rather destroy the entire world than give it to the old gods and the old conventions. When the break into Act 2 happens, they broke the fourth wall and warn us because Marty is reading Little Nemo in Dreamland and says, Nemo, man, you gotta wake up. Your shit is topsy-turvy. And Nemo even means no one in Latin. They're not themselves. They're not who we are. They're no one. I'm gonna go read a book with pictures. Except for Marty, of course, because he brought his own poison. Another convention that gets the much-needed boot in the booty is the overwrought rah-rah speech that gets you spoiled. But did you know? In the scene where they go swimming from the docks, the only one not to go swimming is Marty, and this was because Franz Kranz is <laughs> And it didn't fit the movie because the stoner and Flynn and half his Cheetos and nom 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 nom. But did you know? The on-screen body count in this movie is... But did you know? When they first released the monsters from the elevators, if you look closely, there's actually a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. You are going down, motherfucker. It made fun of all the dumb horror conventions and took a big frosty dump all over them. Cabin in the Woods ain't a horror movie. It's the antidote. Ah! Thanks everyone for watching this episode and of course for voting on Cabin in the Woods in the first place. The next episode is going to be my fave five of 2015, so we're not going to vote this week. Sorry to disappoint everyone. To make up for you guys not voting. I'm going to destroy Zodiac again. Got him. They're dead. Got him. Breaking your hearts. Everyone that voted for Zodiac which was no one. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. Saw a great uptick in audience participation, so keep that up. Obviously, it's going to take a nosedive this week because nobody's voting on nothing, but screw that. Let's vote anyway. What's better, Taco Bell or Guy Fieri getting hit by a garbage truck? Please vote in the comments, and we will see you next time.